everybody who is a member of Hamas. I mean, in order to do this, you would have to look at, you know, if, if the images of Gaza City aren't enough, you would have to look at images five times over of that. And this is going to result in just slaughtering innocent people, not to mention the excess mortality where hundreds of thousands of people are going to die as a result of this in the future. But even then, you would just be dealing with another Hamas-like group. Because if you don't understand what creates this problem to begin with, look, this is the problem. This happens all throughout history, all throughout the world. If you want, there's a reason why the Nazis only rose. First, it was after we imposed Versailles. But then, as you know, it was after the Great Depression, when there was hyperinflation. When things go terrible, that's when the worst, most violent extremist groups rise. Dennis and that's what the future is going to be, unfortunately. Can I respond just very briefly sure, to that? And Dennis can go. Um, um, yeah. Something really staggering has happened in Gaza since October 7th, which is there have been protests against Hamas for the first time in, well, there were protests actually recently in 2019, but they were quashed by Hamas in a very aggressive, violent way. But the people of Gaza, the innocent people of Gaza, yes, who you mentioned, are speaking out against Hamas because Hamas is stealing their food and their aid. And they are seeing, I mean, they've known all along the role Hamas plays in their oppression. But the fact that people, that Hamas has lost support in Gaza since October 7th, while gaining support massively in the West Bank, right? I mean, which speaks to how different the Palestinian populations are in the different areas. Um, I just don't buy it that Israel is is creating more and more Hamases and Hamases and Hamases. I, I think that there's evidence that actually the opposite is happening, that the people of Gaza are seeing, we have to get out of this cycle. Go ahead, Dennis. That's I, insane, I, I, by the way. We'll get to, we'll, I'll, I'll come I, to that. I hate <laughs> yeah. to... Um, Put it this way, so, but I, I mean it sincerely, so I will. You are on record now, because the internet has a permanent memory. I'm aware. Of saying that there's no comparison morally between Hamas and the Nazis. No, no, no you the record, changed Jane. Well, no, yes, record. he's on the well, record. Well, for the record, you, 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 changed, we'll you changed what I said a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. Sure. No, 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 no. Yeah. Co wait, so no, you, I didn't say that. You, you, wait, all right, you don't. So you think morally they are similar, yes or no? I, d I you said I can't see anything different about them yes, except that the Nazis. Everyone knows no, I listen, was talking morally. Of course, Hamas does not control what's the Mr. same Prager, number of countries. Mr. Prager, what's beautiful about the internet is what you just said. It is on record, so people can see what That's I said, correct. and then they it can see right. what you That's said. That's right. Go ahead, sir. There is no moral difference between the Nazis and Hamas. Both want to exterminate Jews. That is what we're talking about, not whether or not the Hamas has taken over Czechoslovakia. That's an in irrelevant point to what I made. There is no moral distinction. Hamas would like to butcher every Jew in Israel, maybe in the world, I don't know, but certainly in Israel. It's in their charter, and that's what they announced. They're proud of October 7th. They are proud of rape. They are proud of burning Jewish families. And the Nazis were proud, but the Nazis hid it and Hamas boasts about it. That's the one difference. Jake, go ahead. <laughs> again, that's the Jake. one difference. See, yes. you make the point again, that's not the one difference. There's well, other differences like, also. Like, go like, ahead, like go Jake ahead. Wins. This is Alice yeah. in Wonderland. It's, if anybody watched this debate and they didn't know what was happening in the world, they would think, oh my God, I guess Hamas is this giant power and it's been abusing Israel this entire time. Poor little tiny Israel and Hamas is this gigantic power crushing Israel. What are you guys talking about? Hamas has got pea shooters. They did terrible damage on October 7th. Now Israel's done 30 times worse to the civilians. They've massacred civilians after civilians after civilians. Israel is, the, is Goliath. It is not David. It is the Germans in terms of military power. It is not the Jews. The Palestinians are the equivalent of the Jews during the Holocaust. They have been put into ghettos. Then they have said, you have no freedom. You will serve us and serve us only. And right now they're saying, we're going to have permanent occupation. And are, wait, so were the Jews not supposed to fight back against the Germans? Do the Palestinians, right. hold on, hold on. Do the Palestinians not have a right to defend themselves? Does it only go one way, where Israel can crush, crush, crush? And how dare you lowly Palestinians fight back? How dare you? Now we'll kill 30 times more of you and we'll occupy you forever and ever and ever. And we're supposed to accept that? Are you guys nuts? They're never going to accept it. Never, ever. Batya, I love you, but you're, if you think that the Palestinians are now more anti-Hamas and more pro-Israel, you have lost your mind. They despise Israel. And they will fight. And hold on, this is the most important point. 
They are going to fight Israel forever, not because they hate the Jews. Oh my God, they're Nazis. Oh, for no reason at all. They were just walking by and all these Jews came by and they hate them. No, they took their land and they still have it. They have them under their thumb. They can cut off the water, the power, the food, and they have, and they're starving them to death. And you think that, what, they just coincidentally hate the Jews and that's their driving ideology? No, they're fighting you because you're occupying them. This is the most obvious thing in the world. Why did the Armenians fight the Turks? Why did the Greeks fight the Turks? Why did everyone fight the Turks at the end of World War I and the end of the Ottoman Empire? Not because they hate the Turks, but because we were occupying them. And if the Greeks said we want to kill them all, which they did, that did not give us a right to go back into Greece, occupy Greece for 75 years and go, how dare you defend yourself? You hate Turks. We get to kill you forever. All right, we'll, we'll pick up on that because this is a legitimate question that I think Batya, since he named you, you can go ahead and ask. What does legitimate Palestinian self-defense, if there is such a thing even in your eyes, look like? Right, well, so that's what I would ask Shank. Is everything that happened on October 7th legitimate resistance because the Palestinians so, are occupied? Great question. So I condemn Hamas for killing civilians. I also condemn the IDF for killing civilians. And now the IDF has killed 30 times the number of civilians that Hamas did. And I know you guys are going to dispute the numbers because that's a very classic thing that people on the well, oppressor side so, do. How many Hamas soldiers okay. do you think have been killed? I just want a number. How many Hamas soldiers so, uh, do you think So, first of all, killed? in terms of the numbers, I go with what is internationally recognized by news organizations okay. and so human rights number? groups. How many Hamas so, soldiers and those have groups, been killed? So those groups say, no question, that the health ministry, if anything, has been conservative, well over 33,000 dead overall. They do not know how many of those are Hamas. Israel's at one point made up a number, well, like, Hamas hold on, let me just finish, let me just finish, let me just finish. I'm almost done. At one yeah. point, the IDF made up a number of 13,000. And then a couple of weeks later, they changed it to 9,000. So it was obvious that it was made up. Do I trust the 9,000 number? No, because the IDF, everything they have said so far has been disproven by news organizations and human rights organizations so i don't know what the number of hamas it, it killed is but it is a tiny number and based on the numbers even if you took the idf numbers the 9000 already the civilian to military ratio is worse for the significantly worse for the idf than it was for hamas so if hamas are dirty terrorists who went and killed those poor civilians along with the soldiers that they killed well then the idf is also obviously terrorists Go ahead, Shane, do you accept yeah. hamas's number that six thousand of its so would you accept hamas's number that six thousand of its soldiers have been killed oh sure yeah. okay so you believe hamas because they're gonna no, gonna, uh, no 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 i'm not i don't believe hamas i'm saying that at a minimum okay because hamas right, could be exactly. underestimating but, but they're not going to so overestimate I mean, right, okay, fine. So, well, well, I mean, I, sure. I sort of object morally to uh, taking Hamas at its word and then assuming that the idea is I was object lying. morally anyway, okay. at taking Israel right. at its word. So, but, well, it's so been why, a far worse why, oppressor. Let's get to an average. How about, yeah. you know, 8,000, okay, whatever let's it is. Let's move past the number. What yeah. is yeah. the civilian to combatant ratio that you would have accepted in this war? Is it zero? Like, it, what is the civilian to combatant ratio that you would have accepted as moral and just? So when you look at the scope of uh, conflicts across the world, not in the past, but in this day and age, after World War II and the law of war crimes were put into place, there are, generally speaking, some ratios that people find awful but acceptable. It's usually well under two to one. So for example, America would not drop 2,000 pound bombs. They wouldn't even drop 500 pound bombs in Fallujah when they were cornered. Israel's wantonly dropped dropping 2,000 bombs all over the place, and that is why they have a worse civilian to military what ratio, ratio kill ratio accept? than Hamas. What so do you ratio? acknowledge, okay, let me ask you back, do you acknowledge that Israel's worse terrorists than Hamas because they're killing more civilians, both no, as a raw no, number and no as a shank. ratio? No, so, Shank, Bacha, because... Let's get to what the point that he's trying to make is what does a, what does legitimate defense on the Israeli parts look like? And this is actually something I'd like to hear but from that, that, but that's, the Palestinian. But, but, uh, part. Well, we'll get to both. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Jake okay, asked sure, about sure. the Israeli part, well, so we're talking I, about it, it's, it, I don't believe that you don't distinguish between intentionally targeting, intentionally targeting women with rape, babies, children, families intentionally being dismembered. I don't believe that you think that is morally equivalent to an army that is targeting combatants. That's hilarious. You no. think those are the same morally? Well, no, 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 don't put words in my mouth. Let me just address that. No, I have to address that. I'm saying you, I don't believe that you think those are the same. No, no, first of all, 
we're, we're talking about two different things here. So when you say, hey, do you condemn and do you find it morally acceptable that they killed the children and the raped, et cetera? Of course not. That is totally morally unacceptable. But if you say, hey, Israel does not target civilians, that is, I'm sorry, but I think it's a comical okay. point of view. I'm gonna, I'm gonna and so they definitely, and by the way, this is really important, though. When Hamas kills a baby, we all condemn it. Israel has now killed uh, 15,000 children. And you know what they did? They crushed their skulls, they lit them on fire, and they burned them to death. And you know how they did that? With 2,000 pounds. Okay, I do want to answer the legitimate okay. And they did it on purpose. Wrap, wrap this okay. up, and I, then I, I want to get to Dennis question. as well um, and Dave, because they both haven't had a chance um, to talk about it. Uh, resistance that targets, if Hamas had only targeted military, we would be having a totally different conversation. Agreed. Okay? I, I, yeah, I think we would, yeah, we would agree on that. Yeah. Um, resistance that happens in the West Bank that is nonviolent. I have a very dear friend who is the head of a nonviolent resistance movement in the West Bank. His life is impossible because of the double standard, the double legal standard between Palestinians and Israelis, which is unconscionable. Um, of well, course, that is, I, I that is totally, you that. I know, you yeah. don't know anything about me. No, I just, know, just, about I just said I appreciate, I appreciate <laughs> you acknowledging but, um, that. Take, take the compliment. Um, right. um, th that is totally legitimate resistance. Military targets, nonviolent resistance, BDS. I don't like it. I find it offensive, I find it a double standard, whatever. I support the right of people to resist through boycotts. That's like a, a time-honored American tradition. These are all legitimate forms. We're using rape as a tool of war, not legitimate. And we all agree on that, by the way. Okay, so I, I don't sure. think we, we disagree about this. It's just when you say that the occupation led to October 7th, it sounds like you're saying that it is justified by the oppression. But that's, one, one second. Okay, sorry, sorry, I want to get back to So I asked originally what legitimate Palestinian self-defense, if it, even it exists in your mind, looks like, and I would like for Dennis to be able to Legitimate play. Palestinian yeah. self-defense would be, we no longer want to destroy Israel, let's make peace. They were offered a state five times and they rejected it. Bill Clinton thought that Arafat was a phony and he did everything possible at Camp David to give them a state. Okay, they don't want a state, they want to destroy Israel. And as regards Palestinians, How's this that, no, that none of you like to talk about? There are two million Palestinians in Israel as Israeli citizens with the same rights as Jews have in Israel. And not only that, they're pro-Israel. They are more pro-Israel since October 7th than they have ever been. And that is according to Arab sources in Israel. They're occupied. Uh, why aren't they occupied? Why are two million Arabs in Israel so happy to be in Israel? Why? Answer that question. Well, I'll, I'll, if Israel I'll, wants to commit okay. genocide against, uh, you say genocide all well, the time. Answer, so why are, okay, so why are, ask why me, are, if no, you're going to ask me a question. No, I'm asking you both. Okay, I'm oh, sorry, you were looking yes. at me and you yeah. pointed you, at me. That, that's so fair I'm gonna, enough. I'm gonna, I, I don't distinguish between will, the two of you. Okay, I will quote your debate no, partner. You yeah. don't know anything about me. Um, <laughs> I have oftentimes said that it is true that I, I would certainly say that I do think, well, I wouldn't say they have exactly equal rights, the Arab citizens of Israel, if you were to be a random Arab citizen of any country in, in the Middle East, I think you'd rather be a citizen of Israel than, than a citizen of, okay. of anywhere that else. is important. I 100% agree. That is important. And let me tell you something. If you were going to be a citizen in the United States of America or under Saddam Hussein's Iraq, you would much rather be a citizen in the United States of America. That doesn't justify the war in Iraq. That's the point. It is important. I give Israel a lot of credit. Israel is a great country. By the way, I think the entire Zionist experiment is really amazing when you think about it. That a group of Eastern European Jews sat down and said, we've been through so much that that we want to form our own country in a land that we've never been to. We want to base it around a language that we don't speak. We want to get international financing. We want to get all this. And they pulled it off. They actually did it. And they made it a really great place to live for the people who are citizens of Israel. That's not really what's in dispute. The point is that there are five million people who are under land that they've controlled since 1967. And at a certain point, you can't just claim it, like, I've heard people argue, this isn't even really an occupation at this point. This is an annexation. They've taken this land and they've basically said at least... Do you least, agree that they least were given since, the state five times in No, I do not. No, 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 I do not. And I'll, okay. I'll respond to that. 
Okay, right, fine. So, so let me respond to that. Yeah. So you just said that you were talking about Camp David, Camp David 2. In right. 2000, you said Arafat was offered everything and he turned it down. Two things I'll say on that real quick. Okay, number one, Shlomo ben who was the acting foreign minister at the time in these negotiations, he said himself in his book, and he said it on an interview in Democracy Now!, that if he was, uh, if he was Arafat, he'd have turned the deal down too. And I highly recommend one book that I'll recommend for everyone to read, The Truth About Camp David, written by Clayton Swisher. This guy was a security guard there. He went around, interviewed everybody involved for three years after the fact. I highly recommend people read that book. The truth is that, yes, Bill Clinton threw Arafat under the bus after the negotiations, yeah, but no, Arafat, Arafat wanted to Arafat bus. wanted to continue the negotiations. The Israelis said no, and the Americans said no. That's a fact. Okay. Go ahead, Dennis. If you have yeah, no, no. Yeah. The, the, uh, okay, so this is, a, is an excellent example. I, I, my motto on my 40 years of radio has been, I prefer clarity to agreement. We don't agree, but it is clear. You think the security guard at Camp David is a, is a reliable source, and Clinton made it up that Arafat was responsible for rejecting I it. Don't think that Bill Clinton, majority, I don't think that Jeffrey Epstein's rapist friend is a reliable uh, source. Okay, yes, fine. agreed. Okay. At the time I you, actually do trust Clayton yes. Swisher, yes. Uh, yes. Okay, that's source. fine. Okay. Uh, he, uh, I don't like Clinton at all, but Clinton, I knew I'd get you on but that Clinton, one. <laughs> well, you didn't get me. We happen to agree about yeah. Clinton's moral character as it, as it developed. Certainly, sure. he, that okay. But he the issue, never lie. no, no, no. He, he okay. So you, your your claim is that they were not offered a state. Is that correct? Tell me yes or no. It's I don't not, I want to understand. Well, it's not what? a yes or no answer. It's not that they weren't offered a state. Yeah. It's that what they were offered, and by the way, we can listen to Netanyahu when he doesn't realize he's being recorded, and he's bragging about how much he fooled Bill Clinton because he put all these poison pills in the agreement, and therefore they would never really get a state. What they offered right. them was nothing that really looks like a state. It, it, it was you yes. can have technically 96% of it, but there's Israeli controls all throughout it, and all these okay. different sections are so, divided right. against. So, each other. So here's the big picture. I'll, I'll be very, very quick. The average Israeli would do anything to get the hell out of the West Bank and to have peace with their neighbors. The, the, there is, that is what Israelis care about. They want to raise their kids. They want to have peace. They want to have prosperity. They want to keep uh, producing uh, the, the most advanced medicines in the world, as, as the Israeli That's medical right. industry that does. The they, don't want, they don't want to occupy Arabs. It was forced okay, upon them. It. it was forced upon them in 1967. And one final key point, Pal the, the Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran and others all say all of Israel is occupied land, not the West Bank, not Gaza. Israel is an is occupied Palestinian land. Jenkins, there is that is what from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free means no Israel. All right, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. We will be getting to the free speech topic on that. Cenk, you haven't been able to speak. I saw you objecting about the occupation, so yeah, go ahead. There's so many things yeah. to object to. Look, guys, I'm not on either side in the sense that I want every Israeli uh, civilian to be protected. I want every Palestinian civilian to be protected. And as a Turk, I'm in kind of the middle here as well, because we also occupied Palestine. We occupied a lot of people, right? So I've been on the Israeli side, and oftentimes when I hear you guys talk, you sound a lot like my Turkish relatives, to be honest. <laughs> and that's not a great compliment, because, and I love my Turkish relatives. Sorry, guys. But when you talk about anything that's related to Turkey, Turks are the most angelic creatures that's ever existed. They never did anything wrong to any Anybody, golly gee, them occupying, no, those people wanted to be occupied, et cetera, et cetera, right? So looking at it, when, when I look at those peace negotiations, for example, I think that in the beginning, Israel was uh, honestly terrible and violated almost every peace treaty they made. In the middle, they were pretty good. And then at the end now with Netanyahu over the last 20, 25 years, they've been awful, okay? So in the middle where they were good, it's actually not the Camp uh, David Accords and, and the 2000 negotiations. Uh, there's other sources. There's one of the lead American negotiators. I believe his name was Robert Malley. Uh, I hope I got that right. He said, oh, this was a fraud. We never really uh, presented a real state to the Palestinians. Jimmy Carter said the same thing. So, but... Oh, Omer actually offered a pretty decent deal to Abbas if it was a real deal, and I think that he should have taken that. I even think that the, the deal in 2000 it was not great, but they should have tried harder. Arafat should have tried harder to take that deal because I remember covering it at the time and thinking, 
Guys, I don't think you get it. You have no leverage. America is going to cheat on the side of Israel from time immemorial. They have the greatest military in the history of the world. You guys have no leverage. Just take any deal because you're going to be occupied forever. So I want them to take a deal. And I want it to be diplomatic, okay? But in the beginning, yeah, but like this idea that Israel is just, oh my God, they just offered everything. And these Arabs... They just always reject peace. That's ridiculous. After 1967, by the way, one of the uh, peace treaty was, hey, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, uh, we, especially Egypt and Jordan, recognize Israel. And then Israel was supposed to give back the Sinai Peninsula. And it didn't. And that's what led to the 1973 war. So this, these kind of violations have happened over and over again. So in terms, of, and I've got to clarify something that Dennis keeps saying. There's a difference between genocide and Holocaust. So is Israel trying to do a Holocaust of the Palestinians or Muslims or Arabs? No. They're not trying to kill every Muslim or Arab or Palestinian in the world. But that's not what a genocide is. Serbanisa was a genocide. That was 6,000 Muslims killed by the Serbs. They were killed because they were Muslim in the area that they were in. So they were targeted based on their race. The same with the Armenian genocide. Genocide means targeting based on race and usually ethnic cleansing. That is textbook what is happening in West Bank right now. And so you, when you talk about uh, you know, the Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, Netanyahu wanted to split those two things up so that he could say, and this is, by the way, in the Israeli press, Times of Israel, Haaretz, etc. And the idea there is so that Netanyahu and the right-wingers in Israel can go, oh, we have no negotiating partner. We have no partner for peace because I don't know which one it is. And I don't, is it Palestinian can Authority? Is it Hamas? Oh, look, Hamas is attacking us. Can, I, can you believe they're attacking us after 75 years of occupation? Quickly, Dave, but then I want to get to Bacha. Okay, well, yeah. I just, I, 75 yeah. years of occupation. That is exactly the view. I'm glad you said it. That is the view. Israel ex it itself is occupying Palestinian. It has nothing to do with the West Bank and nothing to do with Gaza. No, no, no. You said 75 years. That's how old Israel is. Yes. So, okay. but I, well, you, okay. can I clarify? No, because I want two-state solution. I want Israel to be a safe haven. But, but then, so, what does right. 75 right. years of right. occupation the, the mean? Twenty years were not. Uh, okay. Okay. What difference does it make? Oh, it's a so big I just, difference. Well, I, I just want to notice because as you're pointing out the strategy of Netanyahu to, to prop up Hamas, Hamas, which is widely reported, and I saw you nodding at that. I think there's no denying it at it's this so point. Much worse but it's but well, hold on. But well, hold on. And humiliated Hamas at the same time. Right. So, but let's let's talk about this a little bit because I think this all kind of ties together here, and it's one of the points that Dennis just made, where you said, look, Israelis don't want to occupy these territories. And that certainly is true. This is my point about being collectivist versus individuals. That is true for many, many Israelis. There are lots of them who were, were very happy. They were all behind Yitzhak Rabin. Let's make a deal. We don't want to be occupying these guys anymore, right? But then there's also members of the Likud party and people like Benjamin Netanyahu. And one of the explicit reasons, which he has stated in his own words and many high level of uh, uh, Israelis, I could read quotes to you guys for the next hour if you want. They've all said it. The reason why they wanted to prop up Hamas was not only, as Cenk said, so that the international community would never recognize Palestinians, but so that those Israeli citizens wouldn't be able to put pressure on them. Because if it was the PA in charge, so many people in Israel would say, hey, they want to make a deal, let's make a deal. And so the Likud party cynically, intentionally, funded and propped up this terrorist organization that is every bit as bad as you've said, Mr. Prager. I agree with you on that. But, they, but here's the deal, right? So if that's true, which we all know is true, if that's true that the Likud party propped up Hamas so they wouldn't face internal pressure and they wouldn't face external pressure to give the Palestinians their freedom, then I'm sorry, that blows up the Israeli defense for this war, that hey, it sure does suck that we gotta kill these innocent people, but we gotta get these Hamas. You propped up Hamas so that these innocent people would never get their freedom. You don't then get to use that group as an excuse for why you can slaughter them. Well, sorry, so no reason. Reasonable for person can record, defend that. For the, for the record, so that everyone knows, it was the Palestinian Authority before the word Hamas was ever known that murdered all the members of the Israeli Olympic team in the Munich '72 that Olympics. True. That this, this portrayal of the Palestinian Authority minus Hamas as wonderful people is sick. No, okay. but that's but the point has been changed. Yeah, but the point is, see, but this is such a cheap. that's such a cheap cop. That's such a cheap cop out to point to one atrocity in history. It is an atrocity. 
blown up buses, all the blown up schools. All the what are you what talking about? What happened in the Oscar That was all PA. Okay, so hold on. Israel just murdered 15,000 people. They didn't murder them. Cigar, can I just say one thing? Murder is one thing quickly. Sorry, all right. To just point to one atrocity and then say get out of jail free card. I think it is objectively true that there has been atrocities that has been committed by the PLO and also by members, not necessarily of the Israeli government, but certainly yes, Israeli the Israeli paramilitary government. organization. Much Sometimes worse. the Israeli government as well. I mean, Batya, I do want to get the response. I do want to get the response to this uh, whenever it comes to the genocide question, because that's one that is very hot right now, specifically for the American audience. This is a key point of the intra-left debate around Joe Biden and his candidacy. So Batya, I would like for you to respond and to make the case around why Israel is or is not committing a genocide. We'll stick on this question and we'll get some responses from over here as well. So, Baja, go ahead. I don't believe Israel is committing a genocide, um, precisely because of how Shank de defined the word genocide, which is the intentional targeting of a people based on their ethnicity or their race. And that's clearly not happening here. I mean, um, really? first of We'll get to you, Shane. Come on. Aren't you curious you're what up. I'm going to say? You're up, you're up soon, but, but Dave is next. Right, um, right. You know, they're not being targeted because they're Muslims or Arabs or Palestinians. They're being targeted because Hamas has embedded itself within a civilian population, right? None of us would accept, I hope, that if they had only killed let's say 6,000 Hamas terrorists, that that would be a genocide, right? We would understand that that was a military campaign to rid Israel of a danger threatening to its, its civilians. These people who have been killed have been killed as a result of Israel's attempt to eradicate Hamas. And so to suggest that they are being targeted because of their race, or I mean, we don't believe that. We know that that's not the case. We know that if they were Palestinians living in Israel or living in Jordan, Israel would not be committing, they would not be dying as a result of Israel's actions. Um, and furthermore, you can point to all of the ways in which Israel has tried to move the civilian population out of the way. They moved a million people out of northern Gaza into Khan Yunis and into Rafa and into southern Gaza to get them out of the way. Now, I see you smiling. You're probably thinking to yourself, oh, she's proving my point. It's ethnic cleansing. But here's the yes. point. I mean, it's <laughs> either you can, the ethnic cleansing charge and the genocide charge are a little bit um, um, contradictory, right? Okay. Because if they were trying to commit a genocide and get could just simply you know, eradicate the world of the of Gaza's Muslim population. Surely, they would not be moving civilians out of harm's way while they're trying to get rid of the presence of Hamas so in a certain let place me just or clarify. not. Are you saying that it is more akin to an ethnic cleansing, or it's not a genocide? Saying, I mean, I, I think it's really funny to both claim that Israel doesn't do enough to protect civilians, and then to use a word like ethnic cleansing, like a nasty, accusatory, racist word, when they actually well, did what do you try. Mean by racist word? What like that? ethnic cleansing, like to suggest okay. they're doing something. Okay. Were, you know, okay. racist right. when they tried to protect the civilian lives of the people living okay. in Northern Ireland. I, 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 I want to get Dave. Well, no, 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 yeah, okay. because you, you dominated last time, okay. so Dave, okay. you're, you're up. Okay, so uh, yeah. look, I, I want to just say that in terms of the, the charge of genocide, I don't use the word genocide. <laughs> I just think that it, the debate devolves into semantics sure. every time you use yeah. it. The international legal definition of genocide is so incredibly vague okay. that it's like if you try to destroy a nationality or ethnicity in whole or part, so then, like, if you were to, like, murder two people of an ethnicity, is that a... I just don't even care about the debate. I'm saying it's wrong. And if, in terms of, like, the term ethnic cleansing, there is no debate. Every single new historian in Israel concludes that there was ethnic cleansing at the beginning of the, the creation of Israel. Now, you know, I, I know, I'm just yeah. making okay. that point. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to go back to revisit something here because I literally just made what I feel is the most important point of all of this about that I think the entire Israeli defense is destroyed when you add in the component that they intentionally propped up Hamas so that the Palestinians wouldn't get their freedom. And as a response, Mr. Prager invokes, so, and, hold on, invokes an atrocity that, yeah. that happened once. And like, okay, that was an atrocity. I only because I didn't have more yeah, Let me just finish. All right, well, let me just finish. Atrocities. Yes, I know we you could, could invoke spend the rest of the day or evening. Yes, okay, can I just finish? Non-Hamas Palestinian atrocities. What happened to Dyer Yassan? 
You want to have a, a was 1948. So what? Okay. There is so no what? war in the history of the world oh, oh, where see, you have is, not so had. So it's a cop out. So no, it's not a cop so, out. No, no, I'm no. acknowledging so the area I said was awful. Okay. So by the way, right. hold on. Let me just finish my it, sentence yes, and then you guys so can what? continue. So let it me, proves what? Right. Exactly. It proves yeah. nothing. Yeah. My yeah. point so is, why did you make it? Because I'm mirroring how your point proves nothing. You're just dodging. You're just dodging the point that I was making about this current war. Yes, there have been. There is. It's objectively true. There have been horrific un godly atrocities committed by both sides. Not both sides. That's a oh, lie. Come on. That is a libel. It, it is, is not true. Oh, it's a libel. Okay. You, other than the area sin, which was during wartime of a village and it and absolutely terrible. Tell me where there's been Israeli atrocities comparable to Palestinian atrocities. Go ahead. Janky Everybody Janky. quiet. Yeah. Name it. Or you libeled. Name I, I it, or you, yes. Wait, you, so why is the you, one I wait? Hold on. So the one I said doesn't count. Why? Because it was why, during because wartime. No, because, because of this exception. Times. Oh, so to make, a, to make a generalization, Israel commits atrocities and Palestinian commits atrocities. You can't name one other than in 1948 in a village during a war. That is a libel of Israel. It's, and you wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So, listen, you can keep saying the word libel. That's yes, fine. it is a libel to okay, morally if you want to, equate well, what, what atrocities what, on both sides. That is a libel. What do you mean by libel? Libel means oh, Israel is. Yeah. Guilty of atrocity as the Palestinians is a libel of Israel. I don't know why that's complex. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, hold on. Well, I was well, asked the yeah, question no, here. Well, I'm just saying, saying if here. wars right. don't Rather count, quickly. then fine. But okay. if you want to ask for the atrocity, it's happening right now in Gaza. Exactly. So I don't know what point you're trying oh, to so prove. So these are atrocities. Jane, Jane, yes. Oh, yeah. I see. So this is the same as blowing up school buses of children. You I didn't say it's the same. Them. No, yes, I didn't. Are. Then you're using the same no, term. No, you said to that. I didn't say that. Okay, I'm just, like I'll be very, very quick. Same. My point was that you mentioning an atrocity that happened in the past did not counter the point that I just made that this destroys Israel's defense for this war. And I just made the point that I could name atrocities too. You're now claiming that I'm equating things that I never said were the same and accusing yes, me of libel, which is tired. Sir, so respectfully, it's a me. tired they accusation. They both commit atrocities is tired. Okay, that's okay. what's No, that's a, right, right, well, that's, okay. a that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Okay, go ahead, Cenk. Yeah, well, he lives in a different planet. Okay, so first the genocide thing. Let me just finish that real quick. Yes, I agree. And I then live on a different planet. Yeah, yeah. I okay. Agree all right, all right, all right. All right. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. So first of all, just finishing up the genocide real quick. Every genocide uh, defender who says the same thing, and I don't, I don't mean it in a personal way, guys. I just mean that the Serbs literally at the International Criminal Court said, well, we didn't target them because they're Muslims, we targeted them because they were there and they were against us. The Turks said, we didn't target them because they're Armenians, it's because they struck us first and they did this rebellion and they were killing Turkish civilians. What the hell were we supposed to do? We had to move them and we had to kill them. So we had a right to defend ourselves. You're mirroring exactly what every defender of a genocide says. Well, and what I say back to the Turks my own people is, yeah, you didn't kill Norwegians, you didn't kill uh, people from Botswana, you killed Armenians and you targeted Armenians. And in the same exact way, Israel is targeting Palestinians. The fact that it's because they're there doesn't help that case at all. And you're moving them, you're yeah, killing them, and you're targeting Germans, Palestinians. Yeah, America, that is a genocide. Yeah, America target Germans. Okay, so hold on. I haven't even, that's yeah. just a quick right. point on genocide. I didn't even get to the actual right, thing. Your, because your, he's making a, he's your your point about. Your mate doesn't agree with the right. Word well, genocide. Well, okay, it's I a don't difference care. between a okay, okay. Right. So I don't care at all. That's okay. Yeah. So there's a lot we don't agree on. He's yeah. a libertarian now progressive. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we disagree on everything. It's just this is so terrible. Yeah. We're in agree on this. Oh, yeah. So now the core yeah. of the thing is. Like this, the reason I said Dennis lives on a different planet is, he says, name one Israeli atrocity. Everyone out there that isn't an Israeli supporter is screaming into the camera, right now, mm -hmm. right now. So for example, Hamas killed 34 kids on October 7th. I, I came out immediately, condemned it in the strongest words. I can't believe it. Well, how is that helpful? It's immoral, it's counterproductive, it's dumb, it's uh, terrible in every way. 34 uh, poor Israeli kids. There are now 15,000 dead Palestinian kids. And you're telling right. me that Israel hasn't so we'll, committed right. atrocities? We're, we're, we're so okay. guys, so what we are seeing with our yeah. own eyes is that Gaza is decimated. They destroyed the entire place and 85% of... And eight, and that was eighty. Meant for me. Okay. okay, sorry. Oh, <laughs> and and over eighty-five percent of Palestinians have been displaced. There's one point one million people starved.
starving to death and you still can't see it. And that's what's amazing about bias, that you look at how they have killed over 33,000 people. Okay, say 6,000 is a must, say 9,000 is a must. You still have 25,000 dead women and children and you go, what atrocities? They have kill zones. Why did they kill the three Israeli hostages? Because they were in a kill zone. In a kill zone, they murder everyone in the kill zone. There's sniper bullets in kids' heads because they were in a kill zone. They've killed more uh, journalists than all other conflicts this year combined. They've killed three times the amount of humanitarian aid workers. The World Central Kitchen, they murdered those people. There was a six-year-old who was stuck. They told the IDF, we are going to get her. The IDF said, okay. The IDF goes and finds her. They'd already killed her. The rest of her family members in that car. They then killed not only the six-year-old girl, but everyone in the ambulance that came to rescue them. And you're saying you can't see a single Israeli atrocity? And one last thing. What they have kept ratio these people. Would you hold on, accept? hold on, hold on. What ratio hold on, would you hold on, accept? hold on. And, they, and the last atrocity okay. is keeping five and a half million Palestinians prisoners. And, and, and Prager says, oh, not 75 years, only 57 years we've kept these people prisoners. And think about the absurd claims that you guys are making. Oh, the Palestinians are fine inside of Israel. I can make the same exact claim for black people during slavery. Well, they were fine in the North. We had a democracy yeah. in America. No, what Iraqis, are you guys complaining about slavery the, in the South? Okay. We, they were treated perfectly yeah, fine in the North. Right, last point there. We actually have to do a quick read from our sponsor. So, Dave, if do you don't we, mind. Do we uh, have you to do, do a quick read? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Hey, guys, you know what I love? Debates about Israel and Palestine. <laughs> but you know what I hate? Woke corporations. People are waking up and realizing that their daily spending habits are shaping this country and empowering radically destructive ideologies. It's time to change that. Welcome to a new marketplace, a place where you can buy everything your family uh, needs uh, that tr respects traditional American values. Whether it's a big box realtor's agenda across the line, or you're trying to support more, more small businesses, Public Square, that's where you gotta go. They are ready to help you find new favorites from people just like you. Public Square is on a mission to restore the culture through the power of commerce. This isn't just about boycotts, it's about helping you switch to something better. It is now easier than ever to vote with your dollars. Public Square is, the, is America's marketplace where freedom-loving Americans like you shop their values. Visit publicsquare.com today. Shop for quality products, services, and exclusive discounts from value-aligned businesses. And that was endorsed by Jank Huber of the Young no, Turks. He's like, no, no, Just so you know, <laughs> if anyone sitting next to me fully supports this message. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, so here's what, so I'm being you told left us in terms of, uh, we're gonna move on to the Iran section in a little bit, but Dennis, I did promise that you were gonna be able to respond on the genocide question. So I wanna give you that chance before we move on to that section, go ahead. Well, I, I, I keep referring to two things, but repetition is the mother of pedagogy as I learned in the course of my life. Good life. Line. It, it, yes, thank yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> because I know how important it is. I don't learn the first time. The United States can be accused, or Britain could be accused, of committing genocide in Germany. The United States could be accused of committing genocide in Japan by the exact same criteria as, quote unquote, Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. When did it stop? When did the American bombing of Japan or of Germany stop? When they surrendered. If Hamas surrendered tomorrow, gave up the hostages that are still alive, I'm sure they killed quite a number. Uh, but nevertheless, if they, if they did that, if they surrendered, and that would end the issue, it would end the issue the next day. Israel doesn't want to bomb Palestinians. The reason that there are so many Palestinian civilians being killed, whatever the number it is, and that is a tragedy, it is not an atrocity. There's a difference between tragedy and atrocity. Atrocity is deliberate, tragedy is not deliberate. Israel does not deliberately target civilians. Hamas deliberately puts civilians in the way of targeting them. That is, that is the way in which they have created it. One other thing, you will probably know this because it was in Newsweek. A, a, a member of the United States military who teaches at West Point said that Israel has been the most moral army in urban warfare that he has ever, uh, has ever, you, okay, you laugh at him, he that's correct. Right. I, I, that's right, you're allowed to laugh at him. He did write it, and so, it, it and so did the head, the head, uh, yeah. Kemp, Richard Kemp, the head of all British forces in Afghanistan, said that Israel, the IDF, is the most moral army he has ever encountered, which, given that he is a member of the British army and is, is a high-ranking, I think, a general, that is particularly uh, a powerful phrase. That's the truth. 
They do everything they can not to kill civilians, and it would stop tomorrow if Hamas surrendered. Okay. I know this is going to be infuriating for you guys, but uh, we do have a clip uh, that we want to play. This is going to be on Iran. Feel free. We can come back to this in a little bit, but I do think it is important. So this is a clip which has been curated for us uh, by Zero Hedge. This is Benjamin Netanyahu on the topic of overthrowing Iran, uh, something he's advocated for since the 1990s. And specifically, we want to focus in after the clip about why the U.S. should support Israel and its endeavors and its uh, defense against Iran if it chooses to do so. Let's take a listen to the clip now, please, and let's see it. Uh, obviously, we'd like to see a regime change, at least I would, in Iran, just as I would like to see in Iraq. The question now is a practical question. What is the best place to proceed? It's not a question of whether Iraq's regime should be taken out, but when should it be taken out? It's not a question of whether you'd like to see a regime change in Iran, but how to achieve it. The application of power. And so that clip, I wanted to turn to you guys. Dennis, uh, actually, what year was that? You meant, I'm sorry. What I, year? 2002. That was December 2002, prior to the U.S. invasion of Iran. Right. Dennis, you just spoke, so, Bacha, I think we can go to you. This is specifically on the Iranian question. And I think about U.S. support. We are in America, after all, as to why should the United States, should it defend Israel in the Iranian retaliation for the Israeli bombing of what the Iranians claim was an embassy, of what the Israelis claim is a uh, IRGC military outpost. So why don't you go ahead and then I'll get some uh, response from Dave. I think the question is a little bit backwards. I okay. don't think Iran would have retaliated from Iranian soil rather than from um, a proxy, as is its want, had it not picked up on signals from the Biden administration that it was weakening, it, weakening in its resolve mm. and its support of Israel. So that is the question here is, I think the order is okay. reversed. Yeah, and I think that that is, it is historic that Iran attacked Israel from Iranian soil. And so it is <laughs> extremely significant that, you know, according to, you know, my analysis, many others, that was the direct result of um, Biden's wavering support, which can be attributed to, mm. you know, 100,000 voters in Dearborn, Dearborn, you know, domestic politics, let's say, right? Okay. The, the youth vote, what, what have you, right? His need to signal, I'm not behind Israel in the way that you think to the people who he thinks need to hear that in the United States. Um, as for what, whether we should support Israel and its retaliation against Iran, um, you know, I, I'm, I consider myself an America first person. I think probably we would agree when it comes to Ukraine and, and Russia. Um, I do think this is significantly different because, you know, the Iranians and the Houthis, they're not only chanting, you know, death to Israel. They are chanting death to America. They do see us as linked from a values point of view with Israel. Most Americans agree with them. And so it seems to me to be um, sort of odd to say, well, we're, you know, the Americans who think that are wrong, the Iranians who think that are wrong. We also get a lot of extremely material benefits from our allyship with Israel um, in terms of military intelligence, which has saved countless lives, both American and Israeli and European, in terms of um, our military industrial complex. Maybe you don't think we should be, you know, have an industry that makes trillions of dollars to the United States GDP that's based in weapons, but we do. And Israel has made us a lot of money in that regard and actually sacrificed developing its own military industrial complex that would have competed with ours. So arguably, yeah. I actually think this is true, Israel loses more by getting American aid than it gains. Great, although, then we'll stop. Although I think America probably gets a lot out of that, but ultimately that is a question for voters to decide. Okay. I would not be at all, you know, that is a question for voters to decide. I do think we are linked in the mind of Iran and in all of the minds of their proxies, and that's why we should be supporting okay. Israel. Dave, go ahead. Oh, well, yeah, I completely agree that Israel is great for the military industrial complex. <laughs> so, I mean, if that's your pitch for why uh, we ought to support them. Look, I, I, I would highly encourage people to, to educate themselves about this if they haven't already. I, I, I'd encourage people to read a piece called A Clean Break, A New Strategy for Securing the Realm. I'm sure you're familiar with it, sir. It was written by Richard Pearl and David Wormser in 1996. And this was a letter from two people who both served in the George W. Bush administration, very influential neoconservatives. And they did not write this letter to uh, Bill Clinton, who was the president at the time. They didn't write it to Bob Dole, who was the Republican nominee running for president at the time. This was written to Benjamin Netanyahu. And it was all about how regime change in Iraq will be in Israel's interest because then you can 
break up this peace process that that Yitzhak Rabin started down, and we won't have to do this anymore. You'll have security in the region. That, that, you know, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu coming in 2002, testifying before Congress as a regional expert, explaining how if you overthrow Saddam Hussein, there's going to be peace in the region. It will have this sweeping effect where it makes everything better. Aside from the fact that they all got it all wrong, and not just wrong, but like disastrously wrong, the biggest catastrophic disaster in modern American history level wrong. I just do not understand how you can square the circle of claiming to be America first and also claiming we must unconditionally support a country who is clearly trying to pressure us into anti-America first policies. Look, this is just a fact, okay? Every president of my lifetime, uh, Trump might be an exception to this, I'm not sure, is it? but everyone else wanted a two-state solution, including, believe it or not, George W. Bush. After 9-11, Colin Powell, who was the wisest member of the George W. Bush administration, I don't think anyone would argue against that, he still sold the war in Iraq, even though he didn't believe in it, so he'll, he'll have to talk to his maker about that. But he told George W. Bush right after 9-11, you gotta do a two-state solution, and you gotta do it now, for two reasons. Number one, you got record high approval ratings, this is the time to get it done. But more importantly, because he knew this is what drives so much of the terrorism problem that we have. It's not that Iran sees us as the same as Israel. It's that they recognize that we've been propping them up. We're the ones who shoots down the resolutions at the UN. We're the ones who, who funds them and arms them. Okay, and what happened? George W. Bush couldn't get it done. It was Tom DeLay, John Mearsheimer's done great reporting on this. It was Tom DeLay in the House who told them, you'll be a one-term president if you even try to do this, okay? Every American president has wanted a two-state solution. Again, maybe not Donald Trump, but the rest of them all did, and they couldn't get it done. All I'm saying is if you're America first, how can you support the fact that we have a political system where our elected representatives get rebuked by a foreign country. Wait, that wait, is wait. not America wait, wait. first. You, you, the reason he would have been a one-term president is because the American people would have rebelled, right? Mm, not because Bibi Netanyahu partially. would have come here oh, and oh, made wait, 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 sure wait, wait. that no, he No, I'm sorry if you're going to ask that. No, it's also because there's a giant, powerful lobby advocating on behalf of a foreign government who makes it their mission to ruin the lives of anybody who's critical of that foreign government. That's a part of it, too. By the way, the evangelical Christians, that's also a big part right. of it. So, right. so yeah. The idea, well, can I just, no, no. I just we'll, need we'll to respond We've got to get Dennis in here. Well, well, okay. I'll, I'll, right. I'll yield. All right. Uh, All right. Then I'll speak. I'll okay. yield and then speak. Okay. <laughs> well, it just, but like, the idea that some lobby is the reason that an idea has power in the United States is completely backwards. The <laughs> lobby gets its power because it is representing where, like, the majority of Americans are at. A lobby on its own, you think the NRA... You don't think it's shaping You it a think that bit? the NRA <laughs> is the reason that people have guns in America? Really, you no, don't think NRA that. No, the NRA are a bunch of sellouts. <laughs> No, no, Sorry, no, no, but the idea, no, no, like, it's a very good parallel. Yeah, Americans have overwhelmingly supported Israel. If there was no AIPAC, they still would have supported Israel. So that, then why that, do we need an AIPAC? Oh, because why every... Why do we need an NRA? Well, yeah, exactly. We don't. All right, fine. So you... Well, I don't think right. we need AIPAC yeah. either. Israel would be okay. just fine without it because Great. the American people okay. have its back. Right. Right. Whether yeah. we need it or not is not the question. The okay. question is why do they exist given the fact, which is fair, why do they exist? Because people lobby politicians on behalf of what many Americans support. Americans to this day and every poll still support Israel, as it happens. So uh, the arguments that, that have been offered here, uh, it, again, it, it, it really is a different planet. Uh, just for the record, this may come as a shock to the two of you at least, uh, many, perhaps many listening. And I, I would put my hand on a Bible, I would take a lie detector test, because obviously there's, there's no way I could prove this. When I watched, I remember sitting at the edge of my bed watching this, and I never watched TV. I watched uh, Arafat and Rabin shake hands, and I had tears in my eyes. That is how badly I wanted peace. I supported a two-state solution nearly all of my life, certainly since the Six-Day War when I was a college kid. I have always supported it. I no longer support it, just like nearly every peace activist in Israel no longer supports it. And we don't support it thanks to Hamas and thanks to the PLO because they have made it clear if Israel leaves the West Bank, they will get another genocidal, if you want to use the term, a genocidal terror group of Nazi-like Hamas people I, running it. Why have there not sure. been elections? Why is the PLO not allowed elections for, what is it now, uh, 16 yeah. years? 
because they're afraid Hamas will win. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I just, I just want to yeah. like because I appreciate you saying that. And yeah, what a tragedy that that peace deal didn't work out. You know, and I, I totally take you at your word at that. I was just wondering if either of you guys would respond to the point that I made before that you just kind of brought up the Olympic like atrocity after I've been that. Just to since hold you on, made but it. I just say, don't, <laughs> so if you, if Hamas is so horrible, and I know you guys would both say like Iran finances Hamas, and so they're evil for that. What about the government of Israel doing it? Like, can do we I have anything to, to say yeah, about that? Right. Yeah. So when you, you are, yes, so. yeah, I'll tell yeah. you, I'll say, I'll give you an answer. The United States supported the second greatest mass murderer in history after Mao, Stalin, in order to defeat Hitler. It is very common to support scum to, to defeat bigger scum. So who is the okay. bigger scum than Hamas? Yeah. The, the bigger scum was those who wanted to destroy Israel. Okay. But isn't that Hamas? Uh, uh, you're right, so it's both. So, so, so that, that, no, no, no. So that, you, that, that invalidates your argument. No, it doesn't at all. Okay. No, you just have no argument. Who's the bigger scum? No, no, Who's worse than worse than the Nazis? Please. You're right. No, no, other Nazis. Okay. You're right. They're equivalent. I don't know. Why is that? Why is that? Just not an answer. I'm sorry. Bacha needs to respond. She's been trying to respond. And then we have to bring it back to the Iran question, too. Sure, sure. I have two main two yeah. main responses to that. I think it's a really important point. I don't disagree that it was a disastrous, in hindsight, disastrous. At the time, I thought it was disastrous because, as you say, it's not just, it wasn't that he, Netanyahu was giving Israeli taxpayer funds to Hamas, right. but he was facilitating the transfer of cash from Qatar. Okay, so let's just be very, like. Sent the head of Mossad clear. to Qatar to make sure the cash yes. came back in. Facilitating. Specifically yes. for the reasons of keeping Hamas but it's in not power. That he was, okay. So he didn't yes. have to give them a But it's not that he next, is giving so them the money, ready. right? It's yeah. not coming from Israel. I just want, just want to be clear. Sure. Um, you know, there are a couple things. I just want to I, I want to point out about that. The first is he didn't do that because he thought Hamas was capable of October 7th. He did that because he thought they they had no power, that they had no real ability. He thought he could control to, the height of the flame or his words. Just hold on, Dave, please. Yes. Yeah. He, 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 thought, we'll he thought that they were less of a threat to Israelis than the potential of a Palestinian state led by Abu Mazen. And as a result, he humiliated routinely Abu Mazen, who was represented the, the nonviolent camp. That it was a were, criminal at the time and in hindsight even more so but to say that he was propping up the people who then would do october 7th i don't mm. think that is fair not because i, I don't I didn't say that yeah. It, because he was doing it out of a complete misunderstanding about what they were capable of. And the second point that I would make about that is you left out something very important in your narrative of how things went from like the beautiful Israel that like was coalescing around Robin to the like horrible Israel in which Bibi Netanyahu was able to cobble together very with much difficulty, by the way, the ruling coalition that he has now that I'm sure we would all agree is not the one we would like to see in power. Um, not that we're stakeholders or voters there, but um, you left out the second intifada, which is extremely important. Um, uh, you know, a thousand Israelis, 700 of them civilians, murdered, going to school on the bus, children murdered, blown to pieces. You know, that was the equivalent of 50,000 Americans dying over the course yeah. of four years. That changes a nation. That is the reason that the Likud vision was able to get to a place where not a ruling majority, but was that, able to okay. come. Why don't you think right, that Sakhati Fana happened you're, during the okay, Oslo Accords? We're, we're and it wasn't until Yitzhak Rabin was we're getting past a little by bit of a right wing Israeli. I just think that this disrupts your clean okay. narrative yeah. of Bibi yeah. Netanyahu being the person who propelled, you know, who, who enabled October 7 to happen okay. as I some think, sort I of. I think that's been made. So, Cenk, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, yeah. I haven't spoken since yes. we started the Iran part, right. so I have about 12 things to respond to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I like that Dennis acknowledged that uh, Netanyahu and Israel did prop up Hamas. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, now we know. Truth, yeah. But, yeah. but she gave the answer. He did not know what monsters he was supporting. Oh, he didn't right. know who Hamas was? Come yeah. on, come on. Okay, and it's because he doesn't want, because he wants a permanent occupation. And I'm glad that Dennis just acknowledged he also wants a permanent occupation. No, I don't. No. I'm not for two states now. I so pray for two answer, states then? eventually. Eventually. Okay. Yes, so, uh, but not now. Years, not now. 75 it be, more years, it will 100 be, more years. No. How long should they be your servants? Uh, as soon as Hamas... Uh, uh, your uh, prisoners. As soon, as how long would you like to keep uh, the prisoners? They're not prisoners. Okay. As soon as Hamas... They're literally prisoners. Uh, uh, as soon as Hamas uh, gives up, no, surrender. No, because that's his position. He just said he doesn't want... When, when were we prepared to make peace with Germany? When the Nazis came out of power. If the Nazi-like Palestinians are out of power, I would have peace the next day. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's all right. So he says, okay, an indefinite definite occupation where we will keep the Palestinians under our thumb and our boot and, and until they know their role 
then maybe we'll consider freeing them. But until then, they will have to serve us. Okay, very uh, Christian of you or whatever uh, it is that people say these days. Okay, so um, speaking of Christians, there's a giant Christian Zionist movement here, and they uh, are also part of the reason why the polling uh, turned out okay for Israel throughout a lot of our history. But by the way, they are now greatly dwindled, and that is why the polling for Israel in America is not as good anymore. And by the way, the fact that Israel has made a Netanyahu has made a deal with the devil, with those Christian Zionists, is abhorrent, because if you push them on what they plan to do, they said, oh yeah, we love Israel, because then Jesus is going to come back after they Israel. They never say that. I they know them, they definitly I, say they it. They've said it a thousand that. times. Okay. And then he's going to murder not, all a, the Jews. I'm, I'm a Jew, Congratulations I'm with you, doing a devil. Peter, Know what Deal he's with the about. devil, okay? okay. 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 So, okay, all right, okay. I, I, all right. I, I, guys, I, I, come I, I, on I, I, now. All right, fine. Okay, so uh, and APAC, uh, look, Batya, you just said that Israel is helping helping us because they helped the military industrial complex, and they they have lobbyists just like everybody else. These lovely lobbyists. Okay, I don't think you realize how unpopular those comments are. So yes, APAC is definitely lobbyists along with the Christian Zionists. They definitely influence politicians. The reason Tom Delay said you'll be a one-term congressman is because he said the Christian Zionists will turn on you and the evangelical base will turn on you in turn and APAC will turn on you APAC's no, about to spend right the first okay. time no the they're both oh, both okay. both okay so right hold guys guys, guys. Go, continue okay continue, so if if you guys are saying that the hundred million dollars that APAC is promising to spend in the next election is not relevant to the politicians that these politicians are angels they would never consider millions of dollars given to them in bribes, I mean campaign contributions. And that actually determines almost 95% of elections, the, the, not the APAC money, but lobbyist money overall. That they don't take down any account because they're because Joe Biden's an angel. He took 11.2 million dollars from APAC, but that didn't affect him at all. He's the number one donor uh, of uh, that got money from APAC in United States Senate history. Who's the number one donor for uh, Speaker Johnson? APAC. But you guys say no. Ted Cruz, APAC. No, no, no. Those beautiful angels would never be affected by the bribes. I mean, campaign contributions that APAC is giving them. And by the way, it is not just APAC guys. Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing. They love this war. Are you? Kidding? me a giant war in the Middle East, they're going to make so much money. You're talking about the oil companies, the oil companies are going to make billions, maybe trillions from this. All of those different lobbyists are bribing both the Republicans and the Democrats. So there is massive money that is going into this potential war. Now this war, we've seen this movie before, it was the Iraq war. And yes, morons, war mongers like Netanyahu who said, oh, we're going to be greeted as liberators. How'd that turn out for us? Iran is four times the size of Iraq. I I'm not going into Iran. I will do a massive re rebellion inside America, and I bet I get a ton of right-wingers and a ton of left-wingers, and no one, there's not a single American troop that's gonna go into the Middle East to die for Netanyahu, not one. That's, if you just try to send one of our guys into not, the Middle East, that's, we're gonna stop paying taxes. It will be a massive tax rebellion. You know what? I'm not going to give up. We just stop right now, yeah, man. Dave, Let's not even wait Dave for this war. Really Dennis, I think uh, <laughs> with, to return to the Iran question, you can respond to them that as well. But make the case for why the U.S. military should defend Israel against Iran as well. I did not, in some of your comments, you didn't say the U.S. military. Well, well, you said Israel, whether okay, America right, should support. Right, I did better, not fair enough, suggest. Yeah, all right, yes, fair enough. Israel okay, has, I said U.S. support. Israel so you're has right. made it clear all of its existence. It doesn't want one American soldier yes. to die in Israel or to fight in Israel. Okay, I just want to make that just clear. Just the money in the jets. That's okay. right. That right. is correct. No. Just the money yeah. in the jets. That is right. Okay. So if you feel that supporting Israel is immoral, fine. That's the clarity that I, I aim for. Oh, it's definitely immoral. So, yeah, it's definitely They're immoral. They're imprisoning five million Palestinians. That's right. Palestinians. Ah, that's right. I see. Okay. They are oppressors. Okay. Go ahead. They're not imprisoned. They are occupied. They are not imprisoned. Okay? Uh, you, if you can cut off the water the, and the food the, and the electricity, the, 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 what is that? Like the the rape of the we word. We couldn't even do that to prisoners in America. He let you talk. Not yeah. barely. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> right, the... the the left has a mangled language. I say raped and people get angry. Well, aren't you raping the word rape? No, we look up rape in the dictionary. <laughs> there are two definitions, like the rape of the rainforest is not a sexual act. They have raped the word genocide. They have raped the word racism. They have raped all of these words that actually once meant something. And that's what is being done now. This is not the genocide that Israel is engaged in. It, 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 the, the number of Palestinians has increased by five-fold since Israel was created. If that's a genocide, we should all suffer from such a genocide and have such growth of our populations. As regards Iran, so this is a legitimate question. Uh, is, is it in the United States' interest 
purely as Americans, that Iran thrive or that there be a regime change. Forget, let's say we can't do a regime. I understand that. I'm asking in theory. What would be more pro-American? A pro-American Iran, which is a very powerful country and a particularly intelligent people. And uh, what would be better? Having this, these vile theocrats from the Middle Ages who, who kill women uh, and arrest women uh, who, who aren't properly dressed in public. Uh, this is what you guys want us to say it doesn't matter we left afghanistan which which i assume you guys were supporting that we should leave afghanistan i did not support leaving afghanistan of because course. i knew the hellhole that the taliban would create and i don't know why america first means it's okay if people who want to destroy us take over a country i don't understand why that's america first and i have one other comment on america first Damn. i wrote a column on this yeah. and i stand by this this is really important morally I am America first. My life is a perfect example of, of a lifetime given to defending America and American values. But I am never and will never be America only. There are higher values than just your country. My country is first, but it is not the only moral question in my life. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Dave, go ahead. Um, okay. Well, I mean, look, if... if I think it's kind of a, look, if you're just saying, hey, wouldn't it be great if, like, the repressive Iranian regime was gone and then, like, a regime that came and gave liberty to their people, yeah, sure, that'd be great. That, I don't think, is necessarily a relevant question. I also don't know who would disagree with you on that. I'm, I'm sure there are some people. I'm certainly not one of them. Um, the fact is well, that... Well, Hamas would disagree with me. Right. I'm not one of them. Okay, so you're sort of defending, but you're not one okay. of them. I I'm not agree. even kind right. of defending not, Hamas, but yes. whatever. I'm okay. actually the only okay. one. I'm criticizing Israel for propping them up. But anyway, um, so yes, that would be great. The point is that people who supported the war in Iraq, like Benjamin Netanyahu, like I'm sure you did, sir. No, right? I didn't. You didn't. Okay, uh, uh, okay I, so I'm I, wrong. I, wait, I apologize wait, for that. Let me just say very quickly. That's fair. I shouldn't have said that. Then no, 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 that's fair. No, no, no. You don't have to apologize. It's, it's very understandable that you would assume that I did. Uh, but there was proof. I was on hardball with Chris Matthews, and he was shocked when I told him that I am not supporting us going into Iraq. Okay, once, so I give you a lot of credit for that. Then. So it's recorded. Did he once, sexually harass let you? Let me just say, no, he did not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I felt bad about it. But the, uh, uh, but I, 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 will, I will say, though, that once we were there, I did believe that we had to prevail. Okay, okay, fine, fair okay, enough. Fair, so let me say, I'll, I'll amend yeah. that to say, all of the uh, neoconservatives, Benjamin Netanyahu, the people who supported us going into the war in Iraq, well, what was the effect of that? We handed the country essentially over to Iran. And all of this, this uh, wisdom, which was so ridiculous, that so you had Saddam Hussein, uh, a longtime enemy of Iran. They fought a brutal war together where 500,000 people on, on each side died. By the way, America backed Saddam Hussein while he was doing the most vicious things that he had ever done. Um, he was a, a Sunni minority oppressing a Shiite majority. And their scheme was if we overthrow this guy, this will put pressure on Iran to be more democratic. And all that happened was it gave more uh, uh, regional influence to Iran. And then, actually, the attempted regime change in Syria that Obama failed on for multiple reasons, I think actually kind of similarly to what you guys were talking about, he was sending these weapons into the anti-Assad rebels. They saw, as John Kerry admitted, the rise of ISIS. Obama called them JV. I think it's very similar to the way Benjamin Netanyahu looked at Hamas. I can control the height of the flame. And then they invaded Iraq. And he was like, hey, you guys weren't supposed to do that part, right? But what happened, what was the effect of that? Was that the uh, Syrians were more reliant on Iran than ever before. What was the effect on the Saudi-US war in, in Yemen? that the Houthis became more reliant on Iran than ever before. So yes, we would all like this magical scenario where Iran becomes a free country, but in reality, the, the policies that Israel, as well as the, most of the neoconservatives in this country have pushed, have been to the opposite effect, has only made Iran more powerful and more influential in the region. Go ahead, Bacha. So I, wanted to oh, give I, a I don't really disagree with okay. that. Okay. All right. Well, Jake, <laughs> you, you want go. to say something? Yeah. Now so I'm going to read your we'll book. Wrap this, we're going to wrap this segment. Yeah. Right, go ahead. So, a um, bunch of things here. So, 
Uh, are the uh, mullahs in charge of Iran vile theocrats? Yes, they are. And so uh, I was born Muslim. I'm proud to uh, be uh, Muslim culturally, but I'm an atheist now. So they would consider me an apostate, and trust me that I'd be the first one on the chopping block. So I got no interest in the mullahs. I got no interest in the Grand Ayatollah. I don't want to help them, support them in one way, and they've destroyed what was a beautiful, awesome culture in Persia. Okay, yeah. so now, having said that, is the, is the answer always war? No. North Korea is a terrible, despotic, tyrannical government. It doesn't mean that we should invade North Korea. Tons of South Koreans would die, Japanese would die, would get embroiled in a horrible war. And with uh, neocons, I always feel like they, they, their slogan is, I forgot the question, but the answer is war. Okay. And so we had a deal with Iran under Obama where we stopped their uh, enrichment of uranium and we took all the uranium out of the country. That was a terrific deal. And I criticized Obama a lot, but that was one of the things that I gave him a lot of credit for. It was one of the best things he did. It was maniacal to get out of that deal. Now they're enriching uranium. How did that help? And the only reason why it helps is because the neocons want them enriching uranium, so they have an excuse to start that war. And then Yahoo and Dick Cheney and the others have been very clear, but John Bolton, Lindsey Graham, all neocons, all very clear. They have wanted this war with Iran for decades now, and they want us to fight it. They want American boys to fight it. They want American taxpayers to finance it. And that is not the right answer. And so, uh, and when you turn back to Israel, what is the one thing that Israel has done that has been a spectacular success in terms of all these conflicts? Was the peace deal with Egypt. Peace actually works. Since that, not a single bomb has gone between Egypt and Israel. And Egypt has complied with the peace treaty. So the idea that, oh, peace then will, won't work because they'll just, you know, those Palestinians or those Hamas guys, they're just going to do it forever and ever. That's exactly what they said about the Egyptians. And it wasn't true. Peace leads to peace, it's war leads to more war. Last That's not a good yeah. point. I'm go sorry. Ahead, go ahead. I, I wish it were yeah. a good point. I do. I really wish. It's wishful thinking. The Israelis gave a piece of land, I think it's larger than Israel, back to Egypt, filled with oil, a great buffer in case of a war, and they gave every inch back to Egypt because they trusted Egypt, that's why, and they, especially uh, the, uh, the president at the time. So they, that, that's the proof of the point. Israel is not aching to keep Arab land. It is aching for peace. Egypt is the point that makes my point if they trusted that the Palestinians would act like the Egyptians, there would have been peace a long time ago. Well, I think, but I Dennis, least, I think you know that but back then, historically, no, 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 the, the, the Israelis did not think, oh, the Egyptians are yeah, wonderful, I mean, we well, can trust them. They did, they, they did, they did Listen, under, between, under uh, what was his name, the, the great uh, Egyptian Begin? leader. No, the great Sadat. 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 The, uh, okay, Sadat. He was not the great did. leader okay, until he got to the peace treaty. Because he came to speak in the parliament. That's what changed okay, their fine. minds. Well, look, An look, Egyptian leader look, comes there's, there's to the Jewish to parliament. Than that Listen, the, the, the fact is that, and as a libertarian, I don't love this, but the fact is also that the U.S. bribed That's both right. Egypt and Israel with $3 billion a year forever. Yeah, the, the, yeah. But, no, look, the reality is that, Cenk, you have to at least admit there's a point here. Egypt and Israel went to war four times right. in 25 years or yes, something like right. that, yes. and they made a peace deal, yes. and they gave it up. Now, all I'm saying is that there's a lot of people today, and it's totally understandable, that people today would go, look, things have gotten so bad between the Israelis and the Palestinians that they're, they're just never going to be able to live in peace. But at the same no time... No one says never, oh, okay. but they can't Okay, now. let me just finish my point. At the same time, France and Germany are right next to each other, man. England and Ireland are right next to each other. And that should at least be maybe something all of us could agree on, that it's not that crazy. And, and by the way, you could go from being like horrific atrocities to a very short period after that being relatively peaceful with each other. And I do think Jenk at least has somewhat of a point that they did make this land concession for peace deal and it stuck. And that could be, and you're not gonna tell me there's not a radical Islam problem in Egypt. They okay, tried, last, they last tried, yes, here. they tried yeah. to make a, a land for peace deal with the, uh, with the Gazans. They completely withdrew. And they got Hamas yeah. as, a, as, a, as a bonus. Can I ask you, why so, did, they, so they, they did not? They, they, to put the they peace process in for malbehind in their own words. This is actually worth digging into. Also, the, okay. the France-Germany analogy, et cetera, doesn't work, and I'll tell you why. Because Jew hatred, and that is what is, is fundamental to Iran and fundamental to Hamas, not fundamental to all Arabs, but it is fundamental to, to, those, uh, to those ideologies, is exterminationist. No Frenchman wanted to exterminate Germany. No German wanted to exterminate France. 
That is, by the way, the unique, that is very important that people understand this. Jew hatred is different from all other hatreds, and the world is filled with hatreds because it's exterminationist. The Passover is coming up, and there is, in the, the Passover service is a 2,000-year-old line. Uh, it's in Hebrew, but I'll say it in English. In every generation, somebody arises to annihilate us, not to oppress us, not to enslave us, to annihilate us. This is unfortunately uh, uh, ancient and recurring that the, and the we, why why just because okay. people are so possessed right, by right, evil okay, Jew okay, hatred okay. or, or right, so Jake, Jake, it, it, well, it does it? seem that well, way one second, it does then. seem that well, way we'll yeah. get Jenk in here because I think it's a legitimate question around the formation from back in 2005 the rise of Hamas because it's a contentious issue and it leads to this so go ahead yeah so look the fact that uh, Jewish people across the world have uh, basically PTSD from the Holocaust and the pogroms and all of the discrimination and all the massacres that have been visited upon them is super understandable, very, very understandable. But that is part of what is blinding you to the fact that you are no longer David, you are Goliath. And so when, so when you talk about uh, the Germans and the French didn't want to exterminate each other, wait a minute, Germany and Poland are right next to each other and the Germans <laughs> wanted to exting, uh, exterminate the Polish and that they were part of the people that suffered uh, extermination under the Holocaust. Uh, and so, and and there are so many examples of people living side by side who hate each other because they're the two tribes next to each other and they've been warring forever. So again, another example is Greece and Turkey and Cyprus. And what it, uh, if Turkey had decided to keep all of Cyprus when they invaded Cyprus, they would have had to occupy the Greeks for all of these decades. And what would have happened? The Greeks would have done terrorism, right? And we would have had Greeks and Turks killed back and forth, back and forth. Instead, Turkey took about the percentage that they had in the population and let the Greek side go and never occupied them. Occupation is a cancer that always leads to more violence, more terrorism, more conflict, more war. You have to end the occupation. The and is, and, and, the and Dennis, one more thing. Look, look, okay. you think that you, okay. you've got this thing in your head that, oh, the whole world hates Jews. And I understand I where did, it comes I from. And, and so, wait, 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 well, why do you up. say that? I, no, no, you're talking about the history Jew, of no I said Jew hatred is unique it's exterminationist I don't believe the whole world hates Jews I didn't even imply it okay, okay right. so it is Points no I, yeah. I understand that but look it, that's actually a historical it is not true in the Middle East Jews and Muslims lived together in peace for hundreds of years sometimes thousands of years the the Turks rescued the Jews from the Spanish Inquisition so there's an enormous history of Muslims and Jews working together until Israel when in reality in Europe, the Christians slaughtered the Jews over and over and over again. If you're saying that anyone had an exterminatious uh, ideology against the Jews, it was the Christians in Europe. I'm not, it's not the Christians today. It's a totally different situation. But so, but what you've done is you think that the Palestinians are the Nazis. When the Palestinians are no. David, they're a, 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 dis, a group okay. that has been uh, brutalized for these 75 years, more land taken, more humiliation. So Their power, years, water, yeah, electricity, their important. energy is controlled by uh, by Israel. Israel comes in, strips their men naked, parades them around, humiliates them in every way, and now has murdered 25,000 and women and children and you still see as poor little Israel and it's the bad Muslims that are going to exterminate them and why, whereas you're actually denying them a state you're actually okay. denying them freedom all right go ahead Batya. Right. we're oh, denying yeah. they're, well, they're denying mean, Hamas a state forgive okay. me by the way just want they're, de they're denying Hamas a state they're denying the PLO a state they're not denying the Palestinians <laughs> when <laughs> when it was impossible to negotiate and make a state. They were for a Palestinian state. You keep going back to 75 years, which is the giveaway. That's what they believe. We've been occupied for 75 years. And as regards Israel being David or Goliath, vis-a-vis -vis a handful of Palestinians, they are at, militarily, they are a Goliath. That is, th okay. and thank God they are. All right. But they are, th they are a small, Israel is as tiny as New Jersey. The Arab world goes from the Atlantic Ocean to the Persian Gulf. There are 52 Muslim countries. I wouldn't exactly say David is Goliath. Yeah, okay. but this is all right, all right. Well, okay, I'm, sorry. we've got 25 minutes left, and I wanted to bring it back to a U.S. topic, free speech topic that I think would be mm -hmm. helpful for uh, the audience. The U.S. Congress, actually the House of Representatives, just uh, yesterday passed a resolution condemning the Palestinian chant, quote, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free affirmed now by our Congress as anti-Semitic. So my question to the panel, and Bacha, I'd like to start with you because I know you've spoken on this topic, is do you believe that that chant, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is anti-Semitic? 
it's so funny because I said to Dennis, um, I hope we can get through the whole debate without the word anti-Semitism, okay. because I think it's a real turnoff to people. I think it's irrelevant, really. Like we're talking about anti-Zionism. It's you know we should talk about that. Well, we're talking about question, Israel. Huh? Is that anti-Semitic? Um, uh, right. right. Uh, right. You know we're we're talking about Israel, and but uh. but so the, it's a line from Hamas's charter. Okay. okay. So, you know, I have very dear friends who are Palestinian, who are very far left, who would say, like, I don't mean it in an exterminationist way. I mean that that whole land should be a democracy where everybody has civil rights like in America and it's a totally secular state. That's what it means to be free. They mean Palestinians will be free just like Jews. That's how I mean it when I say it. that's what they tell me. And I believe them because they're my friends and I love them. Um, but it is a line from Hamas's charter. And so if I, I think it, you know, the burden of proof on the is on the people chanting it to prove that they don't mean it in an eliminationist way that would wreak havoc and violence on Jews. Like like I said, because it's part of the charter. And, you know, if somebody was started to walk around chanting, a, you know, a line from another extremely vile terrorist group, the burden would be of proof would be on them that they don't mean it in that way. I, I, you know, on whether it's anti-Semitic, honestly, I really I'm just going to I'm, I'm so not interested in that question. I think there's a lot of very good hearted people on the right who have been so traumatized by the accusations of racism coming from the left. They're just so sick of that. And so I'll just stay with that. Like, I, I don't know. I, I really honestly I hate when Congress passed resolutions that have to do with speech it makes me very uncomfortable but at the same time I think you know J Jews don't like hearing this because it makes them think of Hamas so it's there's a tension there I don't like government getting involved and I, I honestly I'm very offended by the idea that Jews need to be protected from chanting like okay. I, I feel like we're descended yeah. from the Maccabees and we need to man up and it's not dangerous and it's not scary but it is kind of gross okay. <laughs> that's right. where I am Dave go ahead well I, I appreciate that last thing you said look I mean the the United States of America's federal government should absolutely never even get involved in what they feel about a chant. That is an outrage in a professed free society. I do not care what anybody in Congress feels about a chant. Whether you think it's anti-Semitic or not, you can yell anything anti-Semitic, anything anti-black, anything anti-woman, anything anti-Muslim, because this is the United States of America, and we have a right to say what we want to say. The First Amendment is very clear. Federal government, get out of anything having to do with speech. So that, now, now, I kind of more or less agree with you. I've talked to different people. There are certainly some people who swear up and down. They don't mean anything against the Jews. They just mean that, like, hey, they wish the Palestinians who were refugees could return to where they came from. I think there's definitely other people who mean something against the Jews when they say that. I think that's kind of the nature of this conflict well, just, um, and, and, and this protest. I'll but so, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, okay. By the way, I agree with you on the free speech issue. I'm, I'm virtually an absolutist. And uh, I'm uh, very afraid of the American future because 45% of young Americans say that they believe in free speech except for hate speech, <laughs> which means that they don't believe in free speech. Yeah. So uh, the, the, left, the, 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 the left has done a real <laughs> great job in yeah. undermining the Constitution uh, on, on the most important principle, probably the First Amendment. That's okay. So we... Uh, a rare uh, moment of agreement here on that. Well, that, if we that, go to dinner later, I bet it won't be that rare. We okay, probably yeah. maybe. maybe. <laughs> All right. But uh, All right. on, on the, the phrase, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, even in its most innocuous, yes, we'll just have a secular state and we'll all get along hunky-dory and kumbaya. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I do believe that with 22 Arab states, the need for a 23rd is not particularly essential. I think one Jewish state on the face of the earth, the size of New Jersey, smaller than El Salvador, is a perfectly okay idea. There is a Hindu state called India. There are non-Hindus in it, but the Hindus, it is a Hindu state and Hindus make the majority. I'm happy that there is a Hindu state. There aren't two Hindu states, and Nepal may, may theoretically be considered one, but there's really one. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It's right yeah, up your alley, yeah, so you know, and, and that's why I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't I, want to interject too much. No, 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 but, but I, I know yeah. a lot about India because, yeah. as I told you earlier, yeah, right. I, I love that's visiting right. there. I've been there in quite a number of times. Uh, but so, uh, yes, at, the, at its least violent, from the river to the sea means no more Jewish state. And if one is intellectually honest, one acknowledges that. Okay. I think Jake, I agree with Jake, that. Jake, Jake, I, oh, I want good. you to That's go. Big. Right. That's so, important. Uh, I, I call that chant a dumb chant and not a good idea, and I'll, I took a lot of heat from people on my side. And so I said, look, if some people think that it's a genocidal chant, why do it? It's counterproductive. It doesn't make sense. Now, having said that, 
Netanyahu said the same exact thing. So Congress is a joke. Are they condemning Netanyahu? Because he said, from the river to the sea. The Likud and, Party's founding charter has almost the same thing. It's like everything west of the Jordan River yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and how about everybody who says Judea and Samaria? That is the same thing, that Israel gets to control from the river to the sea. So that is genocidal. That is exterminationist. So let's be honest. Let's be principled. Let's apply things equally. Of course, our Congress never does that. Yes, because of the donors and the lobbyists. And, and everyone out there knows that. Uh, and so when you talk about uh, a state, and so this is the part why I don't understand two things that Dennis is saying. So number one, on the 22 Arab states, so what? It's, that's not the issue. Well, are you going to drive them into that? That's ethnic cleansing. If we, if the, again, the, going back to the uh, Turkish analogy, if the Turks said, what, there's all these Christian countries. What do you, I don't want the Armenians. Why don't you guys take them? Well, just drive them into Russia. We'll drive them into Georgia. We'll drive them into Europe. You guys take them. There's all those, there's like 30, 40 Christian states there. What do we want? with them. And then when you look, I don't want a one state solution in either direction. And again, that will antagonize some people on my side. Because what is the if we have a one state solution where everybody actually gets to vote and it's not an apartheid state, the Palestinians will outvote the uh, Jews in Israel, right? And then the Jewish state doesn't exist anymore. Israel shouldn't agree to that. Israel's never going to agree to that. And I agree with that. But it, so, okay, so that one state solution is definitely wrong. But Dennis, I don't know what you think is not now, but not permanent. I don't know if it's two years, 20 years, whatever it is. But that indefinite occupation is one state, but five and a half million people are living under apartheid government. Well, you could use any word you like, apartheid occupation imprisonment, but they, they clearly have no rights. they have no rights. They have and so that rights. one that's state solution that, is, is a disaster. See, that, that's again, God, here the we were. I was I was celebrating how much we agreed on and now Sorry. now you blew it. Yes. <laughs> they have rights. They don't have complete rights. That is true. There is such a thing. You want you want to know where there's no right? There's no rights in North Korea. You use the North Korea example. There are no rights in Iran, basically. There are plenty. There are plenty of rights. They don't have the right to their to uh, a foreign policy. They don't have a right to have an army. They don't have a right to have you, a you police think it's force. Clear that in Gaza, uh, uh, there's more freedom than in Iran. Do I think that in Gaza there's more freedom than in Iran? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, you mean? Oh no, I, I was thinking of Hamas. You're thinking of Israel. I I'm think not, Hamas, no, no, I'm just, oh, no, no. I'm saying regardless. Hamas, re Hamas represses the freedom, not the Israelis. So in the West oh, Bank, you on. think they're yeah, substantially yeah, freer than in Iran? Yes, that's correct. That's what I believe. How yes. could they be free at all? Look at what they just did to them. The minute okay. they, there was a conflict, they say, we cut off your water, electricity, no, power. No, the minute your, there was a conflict. Your food. Okay. He said, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay, look. And you, you, you keep yeah, saying, you Bank. keep yeah. saying, yeah. is it two years? Is it 10 years? I keep telling you that if... What would, what would have somebody have said to an American? What are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to occupy Germany forever? No, as soon as the Nazis give up, we, we will have... And there were occupied zones, by the way. There was French, Soviet, and, and uh, United States and British. There were four occupied zones in, in Germany. And it became one of the freest countries on the face of the earth. Yeah. And, ger and Germany was for Germany. For seven that, years. That, yeah, okay, because they had no choice. Israel, we, we already established that Israel gave up an immense amount of land to Egypt because so they understood. You, are you advocating the type of uh, bombing campaign that we committed on Germany, on Gaza? No, I'm not advocating, well, I mean, but no, the no, model you're no, going no, back the, to. The, no, the better, well, I, that's not a, a response to what I was talking about. You were talking about occupation, but, but fair enough. So my answer to you is, I don't know, and by the way, neither do you. What would you want is, what, I, I never hear the people who were anti-Israel to f uh, answer the question, what would you want Israel to have done on October 8th? Okay, I'll answer it. Uh, well, yes, I do, want, I do want to hear an answer. I want, your I want answers from yeah. both of you because it's sure. a great so, question. Okay, so I think the, for, the most important thing to understand is kind of what we were talking about before, right? Is like what, and I'm answering your question here, but just saying, keeping in mind what was going on before October 7th, which was for years, as we've all conceded here, that they, uh, the Israeli government was propping up Hamas and also had this very arrogant attitude like, we can control the height of the flame, like Obama talking about ISIS, their JV. You're not answering my question. I said, I literally said, no, what should no, no, no. Israel have done? See, this is, now you're just trying no, to bully no, me. No, no, I literally I, said, okay, okay, Dennis, I said, let said, me just said, give you a little bit of background. Okay, no, because I'm leading up. into what the answer yes. is. So right. again, my point is, well, the, first of all, no more doing that. 
No more propping up Hamas and underestimating them. Listen, the idea October 7th was not even like 9-11. It wasn't even like, oh, there was planes used as missiles into a building. We never could have seen this coming. They can say that intelligence report was on Bush's desk, but he got thousands of intelligence reports. And it's not like it said the World Trade Center. What happened on October 7th was the thing that Israelis should have been concerned about the whole time. So number one, all it takes was not relying on the, uh, the, mach the robot machine guns and having the, uh, a military presence at the border. So immediately secure your borders. Number two, a real investigation into what happened on October 7th. What were the failures here? How did it take so long for the response time? Not this Netanyahu, we'll wait till the war's over and then we'll figure out, like it's always, it's not the time. No, I think after that, um, Netanyahu should resign in disgrace. Then, in terms of the, the actual response, as Israel always did before Netanyahu, they always uh, dealt with the terrorism problem, with assassination campaigns, with special operations. They, Gaza is the most um, uh, monitored place on the planet. They can pick these guys off the, and the, even more important than that is immediately, let me finish my answer. Then, yeah, but those are the guys they're still negotiating with to try to get the hostages out. The other thing is the number one priority should have been the hostages. And the, 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 it is self-evident that when you're fighting a war this way, your number one priority is not to get your people out. Look, Israel has all the chips. They got ton of hostages, excuse me, prisoners of their own that they could exchange for the hostages sit there, which is how they've gotten the hostages they've gotten so far out. And then after all of that, after the hostage swaps, after assassination campaigns and special ops, you come to the table with a real two-state agreement again. You rise above it. Instead of turning the world against you, you win the world over by saying, listen, we took a big loss. We're going to kill or, or get the people who did this to us, but we are not just going to make life hell for the people of Gaza anymore. We're going to offer them their freedom. Okay. And I think there was a real opportunity to Jake, do that. you want to answer the question, what should have Israel yeah. done on October yeah. 8th? So I said this right from the get-go after it happened. So first of all, going with special forces, people say it's hard. Yeah. War is hard. And so uh, when they started dropping bombs on the buildings, I was like, wait, what if the hostages are in the buildings? And, and I thought you said Hamas is in the tunnels, so how does it help to bomb a building? It's not like the, and, and then Israel brought in CNN. They showed them the tunnels at one point in the conflict about three months ago, and they were totally unaffected by the bombing. So it, the, again, it, the idea that they didn't target civilians is just, counter to every fact in front of us. So instead, I would have wanted them to target Hamas to try to rescue the hostages. And then the most important part is, this is the time for a peace deal. So in the middle of nothing happening, Netanyahu isn't gonna, or anyone else, isn't gonna rise up and be like, oh yeah, you know what, let's do a peace deal now. No, peace deals happen after conflict and after war. And so here we have already had six months of some of the worst conflict and war we have seen. This is when you make a peace deal. And how do you do it? Let's be specific about it, because you can, it's not just generic. You do a deal with the Palestinian Authority, and then once they have the credibility of delivering a Palestinian state, they then come back into Gaza and drive Hamas out. So if you say that's going to be difficult, of course it's going to be difficult. Every part of this is difficult, right? But at least then they would have the credibility. We delivered the Palestinian state. And then that way they can drive out Hamas. And that goes to Batya's earlier point. Look, the people of Gaza are devastated by what's happened. They're not exactly you know, thrilled about what Hamas did in, in a lot of ways. If the Palestinian Authority delivers and Hamas didn't, then they have the credibility to actually manage that state. And you've got to look, if you're looking at it strictly from an Israeli point of view, you've got to get rid of the occupation. It is an albatross around your neck. It makes the world hate you. It makes you look like an international pariah. And it creates nonstop conflict because no human beings on earth, no race, no ethnicity is ever going to say, okay, I accept being occupied and I will now bow my head to you. No, they will always fight you. And look at what Netanyahu just said. He said, I'm never going to give them a state. That means permanent war. That is definitely not the answer. The answer is make that peace deal today. Baja, go ahead. I mean, neither of you has mentioned actually Netanyahu's biggest crimes since October 7th, which I think from my point of view are, number one, there was a plan on the table to find, to identify Fatah members living in Gaza and to have them train in Jordan to become a police force in Gaza with the cooperation of Israel, and he nixed that. And that was a plan that was handed to him on a silver platter that would have given them the credibility that you know they need. 
He also um, allowed um, Bezal Smotrich to nix a plan to allow flour into Gaza mm -hmm. through um, Ashkelon. Again, another thing that would have made it easier for right. Joe Biden not to do this sort of epic flip-flop. So I'm not saying that there are not mistakes that have been made. I think those two mistakes are, I mean, incomprehensible to me. Um, but everything else you guys described is exactly what Israel was doing. The reason they have dropped these 2,000 ton bombs was to get at the tunnels. You keep saying, oh, they didn't get to the top. That's why they were using so many more munitions. And yet, the, I keep coming back to this, but the combatant to civilian ratio was not higher than it was in Fallujah, despite the fact that they were using such heavier artillery because they were doing that in order to access these shelters. I agree with you both that they made a decision that, the, that getting rid of Hamas was more important than the hostages. I think that, again, when Netanyahu meets his maker, as you say, he will have to, you know, answer for that. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what the right question, answer to that question was. But I guess I would ask you guys, like, does the will of the Israeli people in terms of it being a sovereign nation play no role here? I mean, aside from the fact that I think that the plans you guys described is pretty close to what the Israelis were actually doing. Um, you know, d does the will of the people in terms of, you know, the polling suggesting that, you know, Israel is less divided about, you know, the need for military action right away. I mean, Dave, like, is it tolerable to you to live in a world where that man sitting on Shani Luke's broken, stripped body is allowed to live? Like, I, I feel that it's intolerable to me to live in sure. a world where that man so is really, allowed okay. to live. That's a, a okay. really good I, question. I well, she just asked I, me. I asked so. Dave, I want to hear Dave's so, well, I, I would just say that, look, um, certainly, like, I get the the feeling that you have. Like, is it, is it like, intolerable that there wouldn't be revenge taken against this person? It's not revenge, person? it's justice. Okay. Sure, right, justice, ahead, whatever you want to call it. It's basically synonyms. Um, but, yes, that you would get the guy who did that is the point. All I'm saying, if that was a family member of mine, I'd certainly feel the same way. I would also point out, you have to also put yourself in the position of the Palestinians that there's been lots of those people for them too. The, my point is that as a government, as a policy, no, the priority should be getting the hostages mm -hmm. back, not getting justice or revenge or whatever you want to call it. I'm not saying that shouldn't be a close second priority, but the number one priority is that there are still uh, innocent hostages who are alive. Right. We should so, get them so back. That, so that now, goes then, to my second question, which yes, is... Yes, if you want yes, justice... Does what the Israelis wanted first matter to you? Like, as a in terms of sovereignty, in terms of... It, that question. If you want to talk about national sovereignty, then look, no, you're no, no, asking me. Yeah. Do you well, think it on. matters yeah. what you're, the Israelis want? Yes. Uh, listen, I'm responding yeah. to your okay, point. Okay, if you're talking about national sovereignty, you, I was asked a question about how I think Israel should respond, and I gave you the answer. Yes. In terms of the argument of what the Israeli people want for their government to do, if you're going to make that nationalistic argument, fine. Keep my tax dollars out of it. Okay? Let America not be a part of it. We do not have to pick fights in a battle uh, thousands of miles away. It, is, it was the advice of all of the founders, they were unanimous on this, that this would be the death of our country if we embarked in these entangling alliances. Okay. That's my position. Right, so America Dennis shouldn't be Jank, involved. And we're, we're almost out of time, so go ahead, Dennis. Wow. Okay. So uh, I asked, what would you like uh, Israel to do? And uh, finally, when an answer was given, they should pick off Palestinian leaders and make and make an offer for a state. So uh, you you commit these horrors, kill uh, more Jews than uh, were killed in a day since the Holocaust, and we're offering you a state. I would think that the uh, that the lesson that the Palestinians would learn is, hey, October seventh really worked. Look. The Israelis are, so, are sort of giving up, and they're not even striking us. What a great deal. Uh, it, it, it would be that, like the United States after Pearl Harbor going, look, Japan, we understand you have interest in, in the Far East, and uh, we, we, we would like to accommodate you now. That, that would have been the, the, uh, the analogy that I, I would think. Um, the, yeah, so it would be a reward of atrocities. It, it would be uh, counterproductive from an Israeli standpoint. And uh, I, I keep going back to this. Even Israelis who want two states have given up for the time being. And I keep answering for the time being. Should Palestinians change? 70% of Palestinians support what happened on October 7th. But I got to say the most depressing thing was what you said, like you say, 
atrocities on both sides. Your moral equivalence troubles me. Uh, that, that's the most disturbing thing I've heard in the two hours we've had together. That uh, when she mentioned the, this, this woman who was murdered and her half-naked body paraded, and you said, well, you, I have lots of those people too. Not, lots of Palestinians. Really? Can you name one instance of a Palestinian woman paraded naked by Israelis? No, that's not what I was saying. What were you saying? You just meant I, I was just saying... Tons uh, and tons of I mean, first you, of, No, no, you okay. were responding to the specific example of that Israeli woman. I'm that saying Israeli the woman. feeling that somebody, a family member would have of their family member being killed and wanting to get justice against oh, that okay, person. Yeah. But okay. there's been lots of that oh, on the okay. other side oh, yeah. as well. Right. That's my point. Right. That's the but, same way that somebody would join up with Hamas because their little brother got killed in some Israeli strike. Right. Okay. That's the okay. point that I'm making. All right. okay. so, All right. uh, yeah. so, by the way, one other and one other yeah. point: the Israeli opposition. You guys, even even my dear Batya, and <laughs> she is a dear soul, uh, is not on the uh, not on the Netanyahu bandwagon. By the way, I'm not on the Netanyahu bandwagon, and I'm not on the anti-Netanyahu bandwagon. I don't give a hoot who the Prime Minister of Israel is okay. for a very good reason. The opposition in Israel, the left-wing opposition, has announced we would. They hate Netanyahu and have announced we would do the exact same thing he is doing. Okay. That is relevant. Okay. All right, Jenk, go yeah. ahead, respond, and try and keep it to two minutes. And then I'll get a last statement from everybody. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, that last thing that Dennis said is deeply problematic for a reason. I'll come back to. So first of all, on the sovereignty issue that Biden made, you know, you, know, you got sovereignty to do anything you like, just not with our money. So and the uh, four billion dollars we're sending uh, every year immediately, as long as they keep doing the occupation, uh, fourteen billion is unconscionable. Shouldn't send a dollar of taxpayer money. Don't tell me you want sovereignty and then uh, come and ask us demand us uh, of our money and our weapons, etc. No way. Number two, you said that Israel's been trying to give them a state. That's not remotely true for the last 25 years, quarter of a century. They have not made any effort. In fact, they have gone exactly the opposite. Netanyahu was saying, I will never give them a state. They have is, is propped up Hamas to make sure the Palestinians can never uh, have a state. So they have been the obstacle to peace. If you say Hamas is an ob obstacle to peace, Netanyahu is 10 times the obstacle to peace. When you talk about um, uh, kill ratios, and you say, well, isn't Hamas terrible because of what they did to these civilians? I always agree, right? Our side constantly says, yes, that is terrible. But when we say, okay, now when Israel did it 30 times worse, isn't that an atrocity? You go, how dare you? Of course it's not an atrocity because by definition, Israel. That's not an argument. It is, they, they've now killed 25,000. Imagine a basketball arena full of women and children and Israel has killed them all. And are you saying that the IDF is the most incompetent military in the world? Golly gee, we accidentally murdered 25,000 women and children by dropping 2,000 bombs on their schools, hospitals, and buildings? That's not an accident. We accidentally killed all the humanitarian, the, not all, but a lot of the humanitarian workers, the journalists, etc. Oh, by the way, the accidents including sniper bullets to the neck. These are not accidents. In your world, Israel can do no wrong. So if they do it, it must be because they were defending themselves and the dastardly Palestinians deserved everything they had coming, including the imprisonment for uh, 75 or 57 years. Pick your uh, uh, answer. And look, you say that you can't have the idea of a Hamas leader uh, being alive. That bothers you. You should be killed. Well, Netanyahu has now killed 30 times as many people. So do the Palestinians then get to use your logic and say, I can't stand to have Netanyahu okay. alive. Right. I want him dead. All right. So we're going to have it. We've only got a couple minutes left, literally two minutes. So try everybody keep a one minute response. I would I would phrase it this way instead of trying to respond to a simple question. Let's just take uh, the last thing you'd like the audience to be able to take away with. So, Batya, we'll go ahead and we'll start with you. I wanted to open with this, but I'm going to close with it instead. Um, I'm going to mention all of the areas of common ground that we have here mm. because there was so much of it. Um, the first is I think we all agree that Hamas are terrorists who terrorize Israelis and Palestinians and the world would be better off without them. I think we all agree that Israel had a moral obligation to respond in some way militarily to what happened on October 7th. Um, I think we all agreed that there are many innocent Palestinians in Gaza and every death is tragic of those innocents. I think we all agree that if we could immediately remove innocent civilians from the line of fire, we would. I think we all, or at least three of us, agree that Netanyahu has made major mistakes in the past and in the present. And I think that we all agree that ultimately we would like to see every person living from the river to the sea 
living in dignity with full civil rights. Okay. And so I'm so grateful to have had this experience and found all of this common ground with you all. Well said. All right, thank you, Bhatia. Dave, why don't you go ahead? Um, sure. Uh, okay, so it was about 200 years ago that Thomas Jefferson <laughs> had this great quote. I do believe it was in 1824. Uh, where he was speaking about slavery, and he said, I might butcher this a little bit, but he said, we've got the wolf by the ear, yes. and we can neither afford to hang on to it nor let it go. And I think this was a common uh, um, objection to abolitionists that people at the time had. They were like, look, we've enslaved these people for so long. If we let them go now, they're going to kill all of us. And you could kind of see where that was reasonable at the time, to be concerned about that. But with 200 years of hindsight, we can all look at this and go, yeah, but you can't enslave people. And whatever problem comes after that, you just have to abolish this. And that's kind of the same way I feel about the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. It's been since 1967, man. You just can't do this to people anymore. Mr. Prager used the example of World War II over and over and over again today. And I know I'm not a left winger, Jenk is, and the rest of us aren't. But I know when I say, hey, we should make a peace deal after October 7th, a lot of people go, that sounds wimpy and left wingy. But how about forget the lessons of World War II? How about the lessons of Vietnam and Korea and Iraq and Afghanistan and Ireland. Syria and Libya and Somalia and Yemen and a million others? Actually, we should be striving for peace. This isn't anything like World War II. This is a group of people who have been totally dominated by Israel since at least 1967. Israel isn't going anywhere. From the river to the sea is never going to happen. But these people can be given their freedom and peace can be achieved. Okay. Well said, so Dave. Go ahead, Dennis. So I, I would love that too. Uh, Right now, most Palestinians would like to get rid of a Jewish state. I wish that weren't true. If it weren't true, I do believe there would be peace. I think that that is the honest approach. Uh, I just have to say, even though it's my final statement, I, 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 I nevertheless have to respond. The, the comparisons you make are, are, are remarkable. I mean, that the slavery of blacks and the the status of Palestinians are comparable? For, what an, it's such an insult to blacks. All you suffered was what Palestinians no, suffered? No, it's a logical analogy. No, it's not a logical. Well, yeah, no, okay. but it's not logical because no. it's not analogous. That's, that's the point. You can't have a logical analogy if it's not analogous. Okay, okay so one final word. The pariah state of Israel. That is correct. That was what, uh, in fact, Chuck Schumer said Israel twice in his talk. Uh, that Israel is a pariah state. There's a reason that Israel is a pariah state. It's because the left-wing media in the world have decided to declare, along with Muslim countries, and uh, Israel a pariah state. So here is just a couple of statistics that are worthy of noting. In the last few years, 500,000 people have been killed in a breakaway province in Ethiopia called Tigray. Now, one of you watching this probably knows about it. I don't know if anybody on this panel knows about it. 500,000 slaughtered and about 80,000 rapes. Is Ethiopia a pariah state? Of course not, because they're not Jews. So nobody gives a damn. How about this? 60,000 uh, Christians have been slaughtered in West Africa uh, since 2000. They've been slaughtered by Muslim groups. Does anybody call the Muslim groups pariahs or any Muslim country a pariah? Of course not, because nobody gives a damn about the black Christians of West Africa because they're not being killed by Jews. That's the reason Israel is a pariah state. Nobody would like to acknowledge it. It's painful, but the truth is often painful. Okay. All right. Jenk, go yeah. ahead. So after 57 years of occupation, Israel's the victims, and they're special victims. Okay, so look, I care about both Israeli civilians and Palestinian civilians. And so if you say, oh, well, you know, brilliant point about slavery. I said it about the North and the South before. Before, hey, the, uh, the black slaves would get rid of a white state. We can't have it. We can't have it. If we free them, they're gonna, they could kill us all. And they are so against the white state. They're so against America. We can never let them go. By the way, that is what is said in every occupation, in every empire, in every war. And after every war, they say, oh, look at how many of theirs, uh, of our people they killed. They killed our women, our children, etc. We can't make peace with them. And what does that lead to? It leads to more war, more killings, both on the Israeli side and the Palestinian side. It, peace gets the peace, war gets the war. At some point, and this is the point, 
We have to say, stop going towards war. What are we bombing Iran for? Are we nuts? We want a giant war in the Middle East that drags us into it, t robs us of trillions of dollars, let alone uh, our kids who can get killed there, let alone the potentially millions of people who can kill. The, m the moral cancer here that is causing every problem we're talking about is the occupation. You have to let them go. If you're Israel, you have to let them go. If you don't let them go, this conflict and this war will never end. And then you can call it any name you like. You can say, oh, they're terrorists and we're the good guys. But it doesn't matter because more Israelis are going to die and more Palestinians are going to die. Let's do peace right now. Okay. Uh, Zero Hedge would like me to extend a thank you to tonight's sponsor, Public Square, for supporting free speech and open debate. If you want to learn about them, you should re-listen to Dave's ad. Uh, I want to extend a thank you to all of you. You guys were, uh, for the most part, very cooperative, and you were great and respectful to each other, and I think people will really get a lot out of it, and I want to thank you, Zero Hedge, for inviting me uh, to do this. So thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you all later. You can find any of these great people. Uh, I believe we'll have links, at least on my channel, I'll have links in the description where people can go and find them and I highly recommend checking them all out. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and we'll see you later. You have the police state of Hamas. If you differ with Hamas, they kill you. I don't want Hamas to win. I don't want Hamas to be in power. We get to dominate you forever. Why does Israel have a right to do this? Siding with the Hamas rapists over the Jewish women who they raped.